You should always be concerned when my stock market comparisons go back to the 1930s, because you get it? In the <laughs> well, it would be nice, of course, if we had a pair of ruby slippers to take us to, to an America that functioned on actual, dare I say it, capitalism, as opposed to banks controlling government so that they can gamble with your money, keep the bonuses for themselves, and call it capitalism. From Wall Street's canyons to the Capitol, there's plenty of reason for them to celebrate. After all, the banksters have pulled off the biggest theft and cover-up in the history of the world. World, led by bankster in chief Chris Dodd, who patted himself on the back today for a job well done. Put an end to too big to fail bailouts and to an era in which executives on Wall Street felt free to gamble with other people's money. I seriously wonder if these if this, if they drink. I don't know. I don't understand how you can have four banks control 60% of all the assets, not reform Fannie and Freddie, leave the leverage intact, leave the ratings agencies still working for the banks, and say things like that and not have the entire... I guess they figure American people are so stupid that you can just lie boldly to them as long as you have the appearance of being a senator. Uh, Mr. Dodd, of course, having made the gambling parlor even larger than ever at this point, a government that's content to keep printing more money to cover it up. Up. Only 10% of all investment is done by retail investors. Huge percentage, 50, 60, 70% a day. Computers trading funny money for the banksters and to everybody else's detriment. Instead of capital actually being invested in this country, the capital, like I said, trades back and forth. Fourth, I should say, between banksters who spend their days pressing buttons on a computer trying to invent things that they can then then bet will eventually decline. You get the point. Chris Dodd thinks we're a bunch of morons. I can't really explain it. Now, we normally don't like to plug movies on this show, but the one we're about to show you is an exception. I believe this is the most in-depth look yet at how the banksters, both the politicians like Chris Dodd and Judd Gregg and all the rest of them, and the bank executives from AIG to Goldman Sachs, brought this nation to the brink, perpetrated this theft, and haven't been able to cover it up with government policies that allow them to continue to take our money. Watching this tsunami coming. They were having massive private gains at public loss. The financial engineer built dreams. When those dreams turn out to be nightmares, other people pay for it. Bear Stearns, Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers, they knew what was happening. What do you think about selling securities which your own people think are crap? Does that bother you as a hypothetical? No, this is real. Director Charles Ferguson, the man behind the film, Inside Job, he joins us now here uh, in New York. Pleasure to meet you. Congratulations on the film. Thank you, uh, were you surprised at just how clear the connections were between the banks, the government, and the amount of money that the executives running those banks were able to take and are still taking out of our country? I was. I was surprised by a number of things. I was surprised by how naked the greed in Wall Street had become. Uh, when I started making this movie, uh, somebody had told me in late 2008 that I was going to discover, as we all know now, that uh, the major investment banks had been creating securities uh, specifically so that they could fail, so that they could profit by betting against them. Do you know how much money you make when you basically go out to a pension fund manager? You go to the middle class pension fund managers, they have all the teachers' money, all the judges' money, all the cops' money, and you tell them, hey, we've got this thing, it's going to be awesome, look at what the, the yield is, you get the you get them to buy it because you know their pensions are underwater here in New York State and elsewhere because there's a budget shortfall. I mean, how much money do these people make doing this sort of thing when they would sell this and then bet that it would go down like our friends at Goldman Sachs and elsewhere? They made tens of billions of dollars. Tens they? of billions of dollars. Yes. Do they still have that money? Yes, they do. How did they cover it up? Well, I don't know that they've covered it up. We know that they did it. One of the most extraordinary things about all this is that we know that there was a great deal of extremely unethical behavior, and it's unbelievably unlikely that there wasn't also criminal fraud, but not a single senior Wall Street executive has been prosecuted. Did you get any answer as to why that is? I don't have a good answer. Uh, clearly, once President Obama appointed the team that he appointed, we weren't going to get much in the way of reform. Why he appointed those people, I really don't understand. I want to bring another gentleman into this conversation. Uh, William Black, economics law professor at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, one of the uh, most outspoken and educated men in this country on this specific issue. Uh, Mr. Black, Professor Black, 
why is it that Charles Ferguson makes this movie, Inside Job, reaches the conclusions that he just offered to us, portrays them in a documentary, and not a single individual has been uh, indicted, prosecuted, or let alone uh, have we recovered any of the money that's been stolen? In fact, the system that does this has been perpetuated, and we're being lied to by people like Chris Dodd telling us that it's been fixed. Well, as you know, I've been saying this for two years, and it doesn't change. We know that unless the regulators serve as the Sherpas, they have to do the heavy lifting, and they have to serve the guide function, the FBI will be completely lost. And we know the regulators filed zero criminal referrals at two of the major banking agencies. We got over a thousand felony convictions of elites in the savings and loan debacle, which was maybe one fortieth the size of this. None of that is happening because the people in charge don't look. We know that the FBI formed what it calls a partnership with the Mortgage Bankers Association. Now that's the trade association of the perps. And guess what the trade association said? Hey, we're the victims. None of, you know, none of the bad stuff happened because the lenders wanted to engage in this fraud, and the FBI believed them, if you can believe that. I can believe that, uh, and in fact, there's, a, there's an aspect in Mr. Ferguson's film that portrays the regulatory relationship. I think we have that excerpt. Can we get a look at uh, another piece of inside job? So do these guys know that they were doing something dangerous? I think they did. Um, I don't hear confessions. What can we believe in? There's nothing we can trust anymore. We had a whole group of people looking at this for Excuse whatever reason. You can't be serious. If you would have looked, you would have found things. If you would have looked, you would have found things. What is your insight, uh, Mr. Ferguson, as to why it was that they were not looking? And, and they still refuse to look, for that matter. It's a very good question. I don't totally understand. Uh, part of it is that many economics professors have financial ties to uh, the financial system, uh, in, in particular to the investment banks. Uh, Meaning they get paid, they make a lot of money, they get checks from the banks to go on vacation and buy houses and have boats and whatnot. They're employed by these people. Yes. They could take consulting fees. You don't want to bite the hand that feeds you. Yes, that certainly is part of it. And they rotated in and out of government. Many of them were in government during this period. Many of them still are. Do you do you think, uh, Professor Black, that the President of the United States uh, is aware of the gravity of this crime and is complicit of, in, of, in effect in ignoring it? No, I don't think he knows he has any idea. I think he has advisors, Summers and Geithner, who tell him the opposite, that fraud is just a distraction and that we need to get on with the world. They're completely missing the causes. This is the financial equivalent of don't ask, don't tell. And they didn't ask and they didn't look for a good reason. Because if you were an investment bank or if you were Moody's and you actually looked at the underlying, you would have found that the underlying mortgage had fraud incidents in the 80% range and you couldn't have sold any of this toxic waste if you looked. So they made sure that they never looked. And if you were to look at our recourse right now, because we can have this conversation and we can revalidate our narrative for the umpteenth time that indeed we have a corrupt financial system that is designed to take money out for bankers, not invest money into our country, go down these lists. What can we do now? It's the end of September 2010. We accept the set of problems. How do we continue our efforts to move towards solution, Professor Black? First, fire a bunch of people. Fire Geithner, Summers, and the heads of every banking agency, regulatory agency, and the SEC. Get people in who actually believe in prosecuting and do what was done in the savings and loan. You work together, you create a top 100 priority list, so you go after the most significant cases instead of the most trivial cases. Get rid of Attorney General Holder who's been unwilling to prosecute and bring the tough actions and look use the federal banking agencies under new leadership to take a scientific sample of the underlying mortgages on all of this toxic waste and find out the real losses which are being hidden by the federal reserve right now to the tune of trillions of dollars yeah listen professor black thank you so much uh mr ferguson congratulations on on the film the film is inside job uh documentary on this specific story uh opens this friday 
Friday, or excuse me, a week from Friday, a week from tomorrow. Um, where is it? Is it opening countrywide in certain cities? Where where, where can people see this, Craig? Uh, October 8 in New York, That's and Charles. starting the following week elsewhere in the country. Okay, listen, congratulations once again. Inside job, I could not more emphatically recommend that you take a look uh, at this film. And speaking of jobs and investment in America, Bill.